Praise living God. Grace and peace be multiplied to you all. Praise God. Welcome to today's healing school. And we're so glad that you can join us today. And thank God that we can be in God's presence today under his word. Praise the Lord. I trust you're well and also your family well in Jesus' precious name. If it's your first time in joining us for several weeks now, we've been studying the different healings that happened under the earthly ministry of Jesus. And, you know, his earthly ministry comprised of three major areas. That was teaching, yeah. preaching and healing. And Jesus emphasized the healing ministry. And so we, his people, believers of the cross, we should also emphasize the healing ministry of Jesus. So release your faith today. Expect signs and wonders to accompany this teaching today because Christ the healer is in the midst of his people by the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. He yearns forth to show forth his mercy upon us all. As always, I encourage you to take a Bible and take a notepad, get a pen or a pencil for along with us and study the word of God. Praise God with us. Today's teaching is titled Peter's mother-in-law, let us pray. Oh, mighty heavenly Father, great and mighty one, and tender in your mercies, Father, we give you praise, glory, and all the honor as we come before the word of God today. Lord, we invite you in. We cover ourselves with the power of the blood of Jesus. Holy Spirit, take preeminence. And by the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, be truly acceptable unto thee, my God, my Redeemer, my all in all. Thank you, Father God, for your anointing upon us right now. Father, receive all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You know, Peter's mother-in-law is one of the most famous unnamed women in the Bible. Yet God specially calls attention to her and Jesus enters Peter's home and heals her of a great fever, which she then immediately rises up to serve Jesus. What a great example. What a wonderful woman. Hallelujah, she was. And we're going to start in the book of Luke, chapter 4, verses 38 and 39, looking at the account of Luke. Then Jesus got up and left the synagogue and went to Simon Peter's house. We need from the Amplified Bible. One of Jesus' disciples. Now, Simon Peter's mother-in-law was suffering from a great fever, and they asked him to help her. Standing over her, he, Jesus, rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she got up and began serving them as her guests. Now, the first thing that we can learn, that we can see of this great testimony, is that Luke, who was referred to as the beloved physician, called the fever a high fever or a great fever. This indicates that the fever was extremely serious. It wasn't a mild passing condition. In those days, a great fever could possibly shorten one's life. But Jesus, the great family physician, where there's nothing too difficult for him, he took authority. Hallelujah. Now we know that he is the great and mighty one. There's nothing too hard for him. Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 17 lets us to know, Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and outstretched arm, and there's nothing too hard for thee. Amen. Well, the greatness of a sickness or disease don't come too hard for God. To God, cancer is on the same platform as a headache. Never limit God. Have faith in God and resist the devil. The only way to, to stand against him is to resist him by faith in the name of Jesus. We can also notice from this great testimony that Peter, the head of the family, had accorded Jesus the rightful place of preeminence. He honored Jesus. He put him first. Remember, Jesus, hallelujah, the Bible tells us in John chapter 1, verse 1, that in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. So Jesus was the Word of God and is the Word of God. And it is a glorious thing to have Jesus as our family physician. So Jesus enters the home of Peter's mother-in-law and banishes or rebukes the works of Satan from the premises. And the fever left her body immediately. Notice he rebuked the fever. The fever heard Jesus speak. You see, you cannot rebuke something that cannot understand your words. You can rebuke only a personality. Jesus recognized Satan at work in this woman's body, causing this great fever 
and Jesus rebuked the fever. And we are reminded that the Bible says that we should resist the devil. And what will happen? He will flee. The book of James chapter 4 verse 7, it says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Jesus recognized that the sickness was of the devil. So he rebuked it. You see, when you're rebuking sickness, you're rebuking the devil. When you rebuke depression, you are rebuking the devil. When you are rebuking rheumatism, you are rebuking the devil. When you are rebuking high blood pressure, you are rebuking the devil. The devil is the root of all sickness because sickness is a curse. Yes, sometimes one can be sick from not taking care of themselves through incorrect eating habits or not getting adequate rest, for example, you know, um, not sleeping well. But the devil is the root of all sickness. So notice Jesus showed us how to deal with sickness. Rebuke it. Tell it to go. Rebuke sickness. Command it to go. Never entertain it for a moment or take charge in the name of Jesus, like Jesus did. Remember, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 12 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. We are the authorized one on this earth, hallelujah. We have kingdom authority to legislate, to carry out in the mighty name of Jesus. So rebuke sickness. Remember, you are authorized to rebuke sickness. Rebuke it in your own life or in the lives of your loved ones or in the life of someone who has asked you to pray for them. You are authorized to rebuke sickness in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You're authorized to rebuke in Jesus' stead. You are now Jesus' representative in the earth because you are a born-again Christian and the life of God is in you. If you are born again, you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is in you. Greater is he that lives in you than he that lives in the world. You are Jesus' representative. So we should do as Jesus did and we obtain the same results. Hallelujah. You see, it is God at work within you. I want to emphasize that. We have to know who we are in Christ and carry out God's anointing, his authority, Know how to cast out demons. This is not the hour for the weak-minded. This is the hour for the church, for you and I, to carry out God's legality in the earth. You have got to finish your assignment, brethren. It's not by your own strength. It's not by your ability, but it's by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Let's not leave any territory untaken. You are strong in the Lord and the greater one He's doing great and mighty things in you. He's the one that authorized us to go into the world and preach the gospel, to take up serpents, and the serpents will not harm you, to drink any deadly thing, and it will not harm you, to lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, to baptize in the Holy Spirit, praise the Lord, to baptize in the name of Jesus. We are God's representative. And so don't wait for Jesus to show up and rebuke the devil. He's authorized us as God's spirit-filled people or with the life of God inside us. You have the ability. You have the authority. You have the name of Jesus. You have the blood of Jesus. You have the word of God. Remember, hallelujah, you have been given the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and of all the power of the enemy and nothing shall but enemies hurt you. That word power in this scripture is authority or delegated power. You have been authorized to tread on liver disease, to tread on hay fever, to tread on cancer, to tread on all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. The word tread means to step over and keep going. So when you tread on some of the scorpions, you keep going. Nothing shall by enemies hurt you. The devil cannot stop you from using authority over him and that's your authority in the name of jesus oh thank you father god hallelujah another aspect of this testimony that we can learn from is that after peter's mother-in-law was healed she immediately got up notice that she did something she got up immediately she could have said well 
I'm not quite healed yet. I'm feeling weak in body. She got up. She was obedient to the word of God. Remember, the word of God is not void of power. So she got up under the authority of what Jesus said. And when she rose up, I believe that's the time when she received her healing immediately. She got up immediately and received her healing. She put her faith to work, praise God. You see, your own faith is the key to your personal victory. Most of the fights that you will ever fight are your personal ones. Not many of them are collective. Even those that are collective still have personal effects. So for you to really win in any of them, your faith must be out there working, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. The people that Jesus healed in the scriptures received their healing on the basis of their personal faith. It was not the faith of Jesus that healed them, but their own faith. Remember, we always say, according to your faith, be it unto you. Now, let's read the account of Matthew. The book of Matthew, chapter 8, verses 14 and 15, it reads, Now when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. So he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and served them. Now, in Matthew's account, Jesus touched her hand, which brings me to another aspect of this woman's healing that we can learn from. I believe he anointed her hand for good works, and she began serving Jesus and the people who were around her in the house after her healing. Jesus blessed the work of her hands, and she returned with appreciation, with thankfulness, with gladness of heart, and she served Jesus and those around her. She chose to serve Jesus and his disciples once her fever left her. She started using her newfound strength in his service. Hallelujah. I pray that wherever you are, that you're serving God in your church. Hallelujah. And if you have an ailment today, and once that prayer uh, that I make of rebuking sickness has been made, get up and do what you could not do before. Remember, you are authorized to rebuke sickness and disease. You have faith. Thank you, Father. Remember, you are authorized to rebuke sickness and disease. You have the faith of God. There's nothing too hard for God. Put your faith into action. Serve the Lord with all your heart. Serve the Lord with gladness. Remain in Christ. He shall surely be glorified in your life and in your body. Oh, thank you, Father. Right now, I take authority over sickness in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your presence. And I lift all those up experiencing challenges in their bodies right now. Lord, I thank you for sending your word to heal those who are listening and delivering them from every destruction. Jesus paid for their sickness. Jesus paid for their diseases. Right now, I rebuke every abnormality trying to make a home in your body right now. I break the power of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. I command every ailment, every sickness to go in Jesus' name. Shortness of breath, go now in the name of Jesus. Swelling of the feet, I rebuke you now in the name of Jesus. I command torn ligaments to be restored in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for your divine presence. The spirit of insomnia, go now in the name of Jesus. I declare mental clarity right now in the name of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' name. Now do what you could not do before. Receive your healing right now. Oh, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. All the glory belongs to you, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God and shame on Satan. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Well, thank you once again for tuning in, for joining us today. Thank you for listening. Praise God. We've had an awesome time today. Thank you, Lord. Remain exceedingly blessed. God bless you. God bless you. And see you next week, by God's grace, in Jesus' name.